let's talk about Disney because um, that's another big example of a company. You know, Disney, like Anheuser Busch, is about as American as it can get, right? It's as American as uh, apple pie. It went through a phase, and this is one of the other things. You know, hovering over your uh, over your book to me is. Well, sometimes brands just die. Like it, it amazes me that companies like Ford and GM and IBM at this point are still around because most corporations don't last, you know, ten years, much less a hundred plus years. They innovated. Um, they innovated out of their out of in a lot of yeah. those cases. I mean, yeah, no, and I mean Disney. I can remember. I guess it was in the eighties, maybe even the early nineties. Disney was one of the great examples of how American companies just couldn't compete anymore. It had been great, and it was throwing out movies like, uh, you know, The Black Hole, and I mean, it was over. And then right. its animation studios came back in a big way in the late '80s, and now it, it you know, it became this total, you know, uh, uh, death star in the entertainment world. It controls everything, including the Star Wars universe. What's going on at Disney, and where did they? You know, where did the wokeness at Disney go, uh, come well, from? Well, I mean, listen, it's it's a Hollywood company, so it's always going to be left of center to some certain extent in their in their you know political, I guess, leanings. Uh, but they serve Middle America, you know. And when I say Middle America, I mean they serve working class white people, black people, Latino people. You know, <laughs> they serve yeah. the middle class. That's who consumes their products. That's who goes to their parks. And I can go up and down. Um, so, and they, and while their their headquarters is at um, in in Burbank, their real headquarters is Florida, which is one of the bluest, the reddest states you you have right now. Um, Michael Eisner kind of created the modern Disney, the conglomerate. Okay, um, I know Bob Iger gets a lot of credit for you know having a great run, which he did. He he took a lot of what Eisner did and sort of retrofitted it and, and went very far left in programming and, and in, in terms of corporate management. But Eisner created this conglomerate. You know, he bought ESPN through a, when he bought ABC and he created this entertainment conglomerate that was huge and, you know, and, and, and sort of all encompassing and something that was, you know, struck right into, mid, into middle America's uh, tastes and it, it, and it didn't offend you know, Pocahontas does not offend. The Lion King doesn't well, offend. Well, you know, it's funny you you say Pocahontas because I can remember when Pocahontas was coming out, a ton of right-wing conservatives before the movie had been released were attacking it for, you know, throwing, uh, you know, kind of English explorers under the bus. So, if, I mean, it was interesting in the early I mean, 90s. Yeah, was, I remember that too. But I mean, was, you know, it was like, no, Disney was a dangerously left wing company. Like, oh blah, yeah, blah, they blah. they no. they were. I mean, no, they me. they bought Miramax, which was peddling smut. I can remember, you know, right wingers their heads exploding with Pulp Fiction, which was a Miramax movie, which what are was the great, what are the great by ones Disney. Ever? What are the yeah, greatest? like what's going on? So yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's why I'm not a right winger, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, because I actually like those movies. Um, but so, you, but you talk about Iger and his successor kind of getting trapped, like where they're well, way, Iger, they Iger, got way ahead of Iger the, gets uh, blown out at some point. You know, he was a difficult guy to work with. I, I address it in the book. Then his successor is um, Eisner gets blown out. His successor is Bob Iger, right? Who takes politics in, and basically puts it in, in in the boardroom in a much more overt way. And he was able to get away with it a lot because I think Disney was riding riding the wave of of just you know the the media was at a sweet spot, particularly that type of media is pre streaming. People were going to movies. Yeah. It was producing some hits. I mean, I mean, he was able to get away with it in ways that when he left, the minute he left, he couldn't. So right. he hands over the company, a very woke company, by twenty twenty two to a guy that probably had no business running the company just from an operational standpoint. He just didn't know Hollywood. Bob, his name was Bob Chapek. You know, you just, people still wonder, how did he get the job? You know, he right. wasn't a movie guy. He wasn't a talent guy. He was an operations guy. He actually knew how to like a balance. He understood a balance sheet, but hmm. just wasn't good with people. It was just, it was, it was an odd choice. Frankly, someone like Iger, who was like a very sort of af, you know, at least superficially affable guy and hmm. some guy that was always dealing with Wall Street and Wall Street loved them because mm -hmm. their profits went up every year. Um, so he hands it to this guy and then he hands it to this guy. 
he hands a very woke company, but a very financially distressed company. I think people <laughs> forgot what was going on in 2021, 2020 with Disney. You know, the, the theme parks were shut down after COVID, but you know, more than that, people weren't going to movies as much anymore. You know, yeah. we, we had streaming. They started a streaming service that was, you know, it, streaming is a difficult um, yeah. sort of, it's a huge lift. Nobody, right? nobody seems to be making money on it. Uh, Netflix uh, and nobody else, right? Yeah. And um, ESPN, which they owned, was, cutting. you know, people are getting out of cable and ESPN cord, is- You, have, you yeah. have cord cutting, so people are not looking at the cables, watching the cables. At stuff. the same time, if I may, also that, you know, places like Major League Baseball and the NFL are clawing back more of their programming Absolutely. into their own channel. So it's like- Kind of a perfect hold, storm of yeah, a I, lot of debt and everything's going south. So the debt came because, you know, Iger at the end of his tenure buys 21st Century Fox's entertainment assets, which right. in my view was one of the greatest sales of all time by the guy who sold it, namely Rupert Murdoch. Yeah. Just proves his brilliance of understanding markets and tops of markets. He's been around a long time and he's still doing great. I mean, that deal tells yeah. you is proof positive how and I'm not just saying it because he employs me. I don't you know barely know <laughs> the guy, but just so you know, if I'm I'm the outside looking in, that was one yeah. hell of a deal. And it was a one hell of a bad deal for Disney because it got laid in with it saddled with all this debt. Right. So Chapek is sitting there with all this stuff, right, going on. He and then on top of it, he wants to dewokeify the company. He he knows that, you know, again. His audience is not, you know, the typical white liberal woman from Manhattan. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it isn't even a, 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 it isn't a Twitterverse. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's not an activist. It's a guy, a woman, a man generally, a man and a woman with kids yeah. who just want to take their kid, you know, just want to enjoy stuff. And, you know, he, so he, he made this effort. He was telling people, and I, cause I spoke with the people. He wanted to figure out a way, you know, if and one guy said, you know, Iger, if Iger had his way, there would be three same sex kissing scenes in a cartoon. Right. If Chapek had his way, he'd cut it down to one and maybe try to figure out a way to get it out of it totally. And so that's what he did. And he had a good relationship initially with Ron DeSantis, the Florida governor. Mm -hmm. So all this is happening. Um, and then the Florida gets right in the middle of the culture wars. Ron DeSantis, who knows how to press buttons. Uh and the state legislature, they pass um, a bill that basically says you can't teach sex sex ed to kids. OK, you have to wait and, and preclude certain types of issues that can be discussed. The left brands it the don't say gay bill, even though it doesn't really say gay in the bill. Um, and um, Iger is now on the sidelines and apparently he's not crazy about Chapek. They have this whole back office feud. And I get into a little bit of that. Yeah. And he dings him. He says, you know, I can't understand what my predecessor says. You got to check the exact quote. I'm paraphrasing. He hasn't said anything about this, but this is a horrible law. It's bad for kids. You know, LGBTQ TQ plus kids are, you know, they're, they're going to be discriminated against here. And it started this thing where Chapek got under a lot of pressure to oppose a law that most people in Florida wanted. Uh, and a lot of people don't see it as being that bad of a thing. I mean, I... I Personally, again, I'm a I'm pretty liberal when it comes to this personally, but I, I I've talked to parents about this, and they, you know they're not crazy about it. You know, teaching yeah. kids pronouns and you know in, in, inter you know sex between two, two guys, it's changes, and you know they they, they kind of want to deal with that on their own. That's what parents want to do. So, um, Chapek's first instinct was to stay out of it, it and then Iger made the tweet and then it became unbearable where he did a 180 and as he did the 180 you know he went to war with DeSantis and it it just it, it just exposed the company for what it for what Iger made it to be but then it I you know I I agree I mean there was a huge political backlash um, by the same token like people were talking about how Disney was a groomer company works for groomers like where does that come figure into well work. i mean that's social media you know i i actually quoted some people at disney on this and they were like you know how can we be a groomer company if you saw the bud lightyear scene that got so much publicity yeah. right the same sex kissing scene like if you blinked you missed it right you know what i'm saying um i i just think they, they might have went too far 
at the parks. And, yeah. and, and, and some of these scenes, I guess, you know, my point to them was, well, why'd you need it? You know, it was like, you know, did you really need, you know, that same sex kissing scene? It, it seemed gratuitous to me. It seemed like it's flicked in there. And, and it was, it was gratuitously flicked in to, you know, satisfy some, some, um, some DEI requirement. And they actually had, they actually, Chris Rufo, who's been doing a great job on, you know, uncovering corporate wokeness, uh, actually had, you know, one of the, one of the sort of executives at Disney talking about how she instills queerness into movies whenever she can into cartoons. It's part of what she, I mean, she said, those are exact words. Um, and I think at the parks, the greet, the trans greeters at the parks, I think some of this became much, you know, listen again, Trans people are our friends. They, they they work with us. They're our colleagues. No one's saying they, they shouldn't have jobs. I mean, that's, I mean, some of this stepped the line to proselytizing. And I think that's where they went wrong. And it wasn't just on that. It was on political messaging, you know, on, on a whole host of issues. And I think that's, you know, where Disney went wrong. And I think now right. they're trying, as the end of the book shows, they're trying to put the genie back in the bottle a lot. Right. Trying to not Well, be- they're lucky Inside Out 2, the most recent Pixar uh, release is like one of the, or the top grossing movie that they've had in forever. So, I mean, our companies like Disney, and this might be a little bit different than a, than a Budweiser, are they, you know, two or three hits in a row away from people being like, okay, all is forgiven? I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, this they would have gotten it by now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I think, I think, inter- I, I think we're, I, I think they, the, the, I really think the damage is done. Mm-hmm. I think the, the spectacle of, you know, how you built up to 2020 and the spectacle of corporate yeah. life post 2020, where it was wokeism on steroids, has just left such a bad taste in people's mouth. I mean, just people just annoyed. That doesn't mean they will never go to a movie again. It right. doesn't mean they'll never, you know, go to Disney World again. 